apologize to ARCs, uh, Criminals and Gang Members Anonymous. Today we'll be covering step seven. Of course, it's me and my boy Caesar. You know, we, we're back again um, to bring CGA to you uh, in the hopes that uh, it'll help you uh, increase your chances at getting back out into society and being a productive member. So we start the group the same way every time we check in. So once again, I want to check in with my boy Caesar. What's going on, man? How you doing? How you doing, Jacob? I'm good, brother. Uh, to our viewers, um, glad to be back. Step seven. Uh, as for me, like I said, we're still on lockdown out here. Everything is still good. Um, one true blessing that I can honestly say about this lockdown that uh, I'm able to have my significant other with me here more than when I'm normally on the road. So that's a big plus for me. I'm able to build. Uh, I'm able to build on my relationship with her, and. Um, you know, she's also working from home, so we're doing the same thing. And uh, she's in her corner, and I'm in mine. But when we got to eat, then we come together, right? And I'm not talking about spreads. I'm talking about breakfast and lunch and dinner and stuff like that. But other than that, Jacob, and I, I'm, I'm great, bro. I'm blessed. I can never sit here and complain about anything. I believe that my life is great. I'm happy. And uh, I'm ready for the step seven, bro. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, so... Uh, I guess it's time for me to check in. And, and just so you know, I, I just want you guys to know, uh, I don't have the uh, significant other here. So some of us are still, you know, we still got to get down with the spread, you know. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, you know, overall, I'm, I'm, I'm a 10. Life is really, really great. Um, things are going well for me. Um, now I can't complain. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be out here. Uh, even though the program is modified and uh, there's really nowhere to go, I'm, I'm in here doing a, a shoe program, basically. I'm getting up, working out early in the morning and, uh, you know, just uh, finding things finding things to do with my time. So, uh, but it, it, it's a good day. It, it really is. So, see, man, uh, let's start off with, uh, well, let me read this uh, to start us off. Uh, it says, spiritual solutions to defective problems. Step seven's focus is spiritual principles, which ensure our genuine efforts on the journey to change our de defective characters. Applying spiritual principles allows us to heal from the pain, anger, guilt, shame, and resentments we held on to for so many years, from which we develop bad habits and negative coping skills in order to deal with any potential problem that surfaced. These bad habits and, de and defects have become ingrained in our characters, the spiritual principles are laid out as guides through our process of recovery to apply whenever we make a choice or a decision. It is not about reading the principles. It is about consistently practicing them in our daily lives. Remember that we are only seeking daily progress and self-improvement, not in perfection. This involves the daily application of spiritual principles, which are positive ways of thinking, believing, behaving, and treating others and ourselves. They are not religious. But the more mindful we can become of our actions, the less we suffer, and we are able to find true meaning and satisfaction in life. Hmm. The difference between shortcomings and defects. A shortcoming is failing to think, say, or do what we know is right, falling short, or failure to reach a particular standard. Shortcomings are failing to apply spiritual principles, while defects are the thoughts, words, or actions we do that we know are wrong. They are aspects of a person's character that cause negative impacts, damages relationships in our lives, even though it wasn't the intent. So uh, step seven is one of my favorite steps. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, I, uh, I truly enjoy it. It's, 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 it's the step for me that, that keeps everything in place, in order. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna bring the step up, just so we'll see it. Uh, I'll read it and then I will shoot it to you, C's. So, okay. uh, step seven: We honestly recognize our shortcomings whenever bad habits surface, properly correcting our thinking and actions. So, um, for me, this is this is step is paramount because that's what I do every day. Uh, when these thoughts can come up in my mind and I start to tripping on. Uh, these old character defects, uh, I always sit back and think about it and I, I quickly correct my thinking so I don't uh, fall in, into the cycle of addiction. 
So uh, what do you say about uh, step seven C's? Um, so for me, this is one of the steps that uh, CGA uh, clearly, clearly uh, has going to have a, a, a big impact on your, on your decision making, right? One of the three things that we always talk about in CGA is changing the belief, manners, and habits, right? Those are the three things that, that for a person to become a contributing member of the community um, has to really address before they come out into society. And, uh, and I love what it says habits because it says we all need to recognize our shortcomings whenever bad habits service. And, and even though that I've been free out here for four and a half years, I still have a lot of bad habits that I seem to fall into sometimes, right? Um, it could either be uh, me being judgmental, right? It could be me, um, you know, uh, putting other people down so I could make my look, myself look better than them. Um, there's different kinds of habits that, that, are, that, are, that show up for me sometimes. And uh, the only difference between then and now, back then, I didn't care. I didn't care who I hurt. I didn't care uh, if anybody's feelings got hurt. I didn't care if, um, who, who I damaged. I didn't care if I ruined relationships. I didn't care about nothing. I only cared about me. So today, I'm more aware of that. And I'm and and um, whenever these bad habits surface for me, I'm able to correct them and I'm able to acknowledge them and I'm able to have that self talk with myself where I can say like, hey, man, this, you know, you ain't better than anybody. Stop thinking that you're better than them. Why you feel you're more entitled than them or, or anything, you know, and this could be this could be even while I'm driving on the road. Right. Me being judgmental because the person in front of me is not. uh you know, it's not driving accordingly to how I want them to drive. Like, speed up, man. Like, this is a freeway. Why are you going 50 miles an hour? This is a freeway. We should be going 70, right? And because I don't like the way that person is driving, I become judgmental. And this is about that. This is, this is, and I'm just using this as an example of some of the bad habits that we have and where we pick them up at. And, and now that I'm aware of them, I don't want to be that. Like I said, this whole thing about CGA, it's, it's, a, it's about change, right? It's about going away from who you were and what led you to prison and to being who I am today. And I believe that me, the difference between then and now is that whenever these bad habits do show up for me, I may be either correct them right there and then, or I either have somebody with me, right? That holds me accountable and tells me, Hey man, that's not cool. Like, what are you doing? You know, if that person, you know, like, uh, uh, and I love using this example because, uh, and I because she's here, but every time I'm driving with my girl somewhere and I don't put my blinker on to either move to the right or left lane, um, I always assume that other people that are coming behind on that lane should know that I'm moving on that lane, right? I assume that. And when I come undone and I start getting angry and like, hey, man, what's up, what's up with this dude? How come he doesn't know how to drive? And she quickly corrects me and tells me, well, you didn't even put your blinker on. You didn't even tell that person that's coming on that side that you were coming. That's really your fault, right? Because you're not using what you're supposed to be using, which is your blinkers. And then, again, the old me would have told her, oh, man, sh sh shut up. Like, whose side are you on? Like, right? Like, who do you think you are? The old me. The new me is like, okay. And I won't tell her she's right right there and then, but I'll take it in and say, yeah, I know she's right. She's absolutely right. I should have used my blinker. It's not that person's fault. It's my fault. And this is what we talk about in this step seven, these habits that we have, right? That even though, like I said, we've been out here for so long, they still show up for us, right? They show up for us. And, and, and that's what this step seven for me is, right? What do you think about that? It, it, it's funny, C's, because, uh, you know, uh, the women is always right even when they're wrong. <laughs> so, so, so you better get used to it, big bro. Uh, yeah, but Sometimes I'd be like, man, why is she in a car with me? <laughs> but then I'm like, well, you know, she's right. She's right. You know, uh, what can I do? She's not wrong, what she's telling me, right? She's not being mean. She's just right. And sometimes, you know, you don't like to hear that stuff. I get it, bro. You don't want to. You don't want to be eating no spreads the next couple of days. You want some home cooked exactly. meals. So. I, I want to be eating pork chops. Yeah, I, I, I get it. Pork I get chops. It. <laughs> yeah, I want to be eating soups. But you know, for me, step seven is uh, it's really black and white. 
Uh, you know, I'm not cured of my criminal thinking. My, I, I still think criminally all the time. Uh, I say stuff like, uh, they're doing this because I'm black or because I'm an ex-con or, uh, you know, just coming up with all kind of victim stories of uh, uh, why I'm not uh, performing at my best abilities. And uh, when, that th when that type of stuff happens, uh, it's imperative that I catch it. You know, I start saying, man, you know what, this is happening because I'm black. And then I start thinking, wait a minute, hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, whether there's some truth to it or not, uh, that's not a position that's healthy for me. It's not going to help me succeed in life. Uh, and it's only going to put me in a place that uh, is going to put me in compromising a compromising position. So uh, I have to be responsible for my end of it. And that's where I come in and start correcting the thinking and saying, you know what? Uh, it has nothing to do with the fact that I'm black. It's, it has to do with because I did this or because I made this decision. And that gives me the power to change it. Uh, for me, this is a step that I harped on when I went to the board. I, I, I kind of focused on this step uh, because I think it has all the components that the board is looking for. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, it speaks of the two different people that I am showing the board, the old me and the new me. Uh, and so this is a great, this is a great step for that to show that, you know, I still have these old thinkings, but I have mechanisms in place to prevent that. So, mm -hmm. uh, I, I would encourage you to, to, when you're doing your relapse prevention plan, to really look, look over this step because that's what the relapse prevention plan is, is the old habits, you know what, I want to take a hit. You know what, I feel like going out here and, uh, and, and getting my ride on the, and go bust on a couple of people for the neighborhood. You know, when those thoughts come up, I catch me like, man, what am I talking about? What am I thinking about? What, is, what the heck, where that come from? Uh, because... I don't, I want to be out here uh, living life and enjoying life. And, and so step seven keeps me on track to do that. And, I, and I'm glad you covered that about the board, man, because this is, this is the stuff that we normally do. I did that. I did that in 2012. I remember when I was going through my hearing and remember in 2012, my hearing was like four hours long with no breaks, right? Just straight through. Uh, the only break that I had was when they went out to make their decision. But when they when we came back from the break and I remember that they denied me, right? I was denied five years. Um, that's what happened with me. All these bad habits surfaced and I started making that stuff up in my mind. I'm like, oh, they're not trying to let nobody go. They're judging me because I was a gang member uh, or they're saying because of, this, uh, of the crime or whatever. So I started making up all this, this stuff up in my mind. And it's crazy because the habits and the shortcomings came up together because once the, the, the habits came up about making it, making all this stuff up in my mind about these commissioners, the shortcomings came where I started spreading that poison about them, right? I went out to the yard, I played the victim role and said, man, they're not, to me, I had the best hearing. How can they not find me suitable? I was ready to go home. I did the work, right? So I'm out here spreading poison to my peers about these commissioners. Hey, see. And I, I'm cold to thought. I just want to make a dip, make a, a differentiation between being ready and being prepared. Because a lot of times we're ready to be released, but we're not prepared to be released, and that's why the board denies us. Exactly, and that's exactly what happened with me. Because again, when I started internalizing the work, I seen at that time in 2012 that I wasn't ready. Right, that that because I was doing all this work and it wasn't really in here, it was just external. Um, I could have came out here in society in 2012 and did something dumb because nothing had really changed. I had just done the work, right? Nothing had really, really changed about me inside, internally. And uh, the commissioners were, 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 were honest enough with me to let me know like, you're doing all the right things, but you have to start living this stuff. You just can't come in here, and because you have all these attaboy chronos and certificates and education that you're expecting to date. Like, we want to see you incorporate that into your life because, you know, you just got a write-up, like, three years ago for a cell phone. So what, we, what happened there? You've been doing all this great work. Like, what happened there? And it made sense to me. Even though in the beginning, I didn't get it. I didn't understand it because, again, i had done all this work. I'm ready to go home. But I think that was one of the best things that's going to happen to me was give me that five years because I was able to use 
that time that I had till I went to my next hearing to be able to, to internalize the work. And this is why I've been out here succeeding and, you know, living and, and being productive and being of service. And, and whenever stuff like this shows up for me today, I'm able to promptly correct it. You know, or if my thinking starts going out, like you said earlier, man, there's all this stuff that I want to, it just keeps coming back to me. And I don't know how, like, what is it? Is it the music? Is it, is it because I've just seen a, a movie or is it some video? Like, what is it that is bringing these old habits back into my life? Right. And, and this is why I believe step seven is so, so crucial, man. And, and especially like you mentioned earlier, for the people that are going for the board, right? Because sometimes um, you're, you, you you think you're prepared, you, you have everything, all your ducks lined up, but you're really not ready. You're not ready. And even though the recidivism for lifers or people that have done 20 years plus in prison is very, very low, people are still going back to jail. And it might not be for a long time, might be just violations, but people are still going back. And well, that's because they haven't really put the practice in step seven, really. In, 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 in. Any day in jail is too long, you know. So if you, yeah. uh, so if you're in there for for four or five months, and after doing 25 years, that's that's a long time. Uh, mm -hmm. But but it, it it all falls back on us. Let me let me read this right here before we move on. I want to throw this on the screen. Right, this is the first part of the step. It says we honestly recognize our shortcomings whenever bad habits surface. Step seven represents the spiritual solution to our defective problems, which requires us to stop making excuses and start taking responsibility for our individual change. It calls us to be mature and finding the ability to be decent and accountable for our behavior. We learn from our step six experience how powerful and destructive our defects are. Now we have a reliable solution when we are strong enough to correct our thoughts and behaviors before we become rude or aggressive through words or actions. As humans, we, we may feel threatened, challenged, or selfish in our expectations of others. And early on, we will likely slip and fall short through shortcomings and say or do something with self-centered intentions. We make a sincere effort not to harm others, but we will, fail, we will fall short of perfection. This is when we utilize our spiritual principles. A shortcoming is as simple as being lazy or irresponsible in doing what is right. Some may look at it as a, look at it as a warning sign that we are lacking self-confidence, feeling down, or fear of some kind. We become impatient, irritated, or notice we have a prejudiced attitude toward people throughout the day. Shortcomings happen, happens, happen as an emotional response to something we are thinking, especially if our current environment, others, especially in our current environment, others will constantly be pushing their defective behaviors on us, which triggers our defects as a shield of self-protection once our emotions have been impacted. Step seven's practices allow us to find solutions to potential problems. So uh, when I read that, uh, for me, it's always about, it's always about the responsibility and accountability for the conversations I'm having with myself. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, the scenario that you just gave uh, earlier about... Um, uh, the expectations? Yeah, the expectations, right? So uh, I, I think I, I brought this, uh, this experience up before, but I, I'll bring it up again because I think it fits right here. Uh, I was driving down the street and uh, I was cut off uh, by a Hispanic guy, he cuts me off, and you know I was fresh out, uh, had been out of maybe a couple of months, and man, I was infuriated. He cut me off. I had to swerve a little bit, so I flipped him off and was like, "F you!" And he was like, "F you!" I'm reading his lips. I'm like, "Pull over!" And he pulls over, so I pull over too. And in that moment, my mind is like, "You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and go out here and put these things on this fool, right?" Uh, but when I opened the car door and got out. Soon I got out and the air hit me. I immediately corrected my thinking. I started thinking, man, I'm getting ready to go to jail out here. Uh, man, what am I doing? What, do I value my freedom? Uh, and in that process, I had to come up with a creative way to get away from the situation that I created because I created that situation. He cut me off. Sure, I could have just kept driving, not worried about it, but I decided that I wanted to be vocal. Uh, and, and, and cussed the man out, uh, which in turn he replied, 
I caused that. And so I have to I have to take responsibility and be accountable for causing the situation. And so uh but correcting my thinking in that that time was extremely difficult because I had all these emotions going on and it made me feel like or I chose to feel like uh like I was soft or something, you know? And really it took a lot of strength to do that. Uh, Cause the easy way out was to fight the dude, get handcuffs, put on me, go to jail for however long and come back out. Uh, it was real difficult to change my thought process and be like, you know what? There's a different solution to this problem. And the solution for me is to walk away. Uh, and uh, uh, it's, and I'm telling you this story because I want you to realize that this stuff doesn't happen overnight. This is a practice. You have, you have to practice. You've been practicing thinking the way you've been thinking for the last 25, 30 years, for some people even longer. And now we have to practice on thinking in a responsible manner, in a way that's productive to society. And it's not easy. It really uh, is. You know, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use another uh, scenario or another example that happened to, to me, um, I, I think it was over a year ago, right? I was, uh, we were on the road. I was in, Cal we were in Calipatria, Centinella. And um, we had came back from doing the work and the prisons. And uh, I dropped the guys, you know, I dropped my coworkers off. And um, I don't know, I think I, I, I went somewhere. I went to the store. I went to buy some meat. I can't remember where I went. But I remember coming back to the, to the hotel and I'm getting ready to park in the parking slot, and there's a guy. You could tell he he was like he was a drug addict, and he was on he was on something, right? He was on drugs, and he has his legs sticking out where I'm parking. So I come in, I look at him, I I don't judge him, I see who he is. I'm like, well, you know, to each his own. I'm good, and I'm trying to scoot into the parking space. But I'm not. But at the same time, I'm not trying to hit this dude, right? I'm not trying to hurt him, right? So I softly, and I'm not. And this is God honest truth. I softly like gave him a quick honk so he could move his legs so I could go in and not hurt him. And he started going off on me, bro. Hey man, why are you honking the horn for? So quickly, quickly, my def like it says here, right? The defense came up. And I, because I'm trying to park here and I'm not trying to hurt you. Like my voice got high and, and I was a little aggressive, right? And then he goes, well, he, I can't remember what else he said. So I put it on park and I come out of the car and I says, hey, bro, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to get in this space, man. I'm not trying to hurt you. And I was simply honking. So if you can move your leg and then he starts telling me, hey, man, you're all up in my three feet, man. You're all up in my three feet back up. And I'm like. Now I'm feeling like, and then everything, right? The shortcomings, the, 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 the habit, everything's popping up like, man, this freaking bass head is getting crazy with me right now. Doesn't even you know I will whoop the whoop and whoop. I started making up all these scenarios in my head, right? But then again, like you said earlier, when you got off the car and you got a breath of fresh air, it hit me and like, man, I can't, just imagine, look what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm literally getting ready to engage with this dude and I'm going to go to jail, not him, me, because I'm the one that's on parole, because I'm the one that just got out after 20 some years. So it's going to be me. And I says, you know what, bro, you're good. I apologize. And I left the car. I didn't even go all the way down the, the, the parking. I just left it in a way where it wouldn't even touch me. Right. And I left it alone. And, but I remember going back to my room and it didn't bother me. The only thing that was bothering me was, well, maybe this, you know, maybe he could do something to my car now. So now I'm constantly in the mirror, I'm in the window <laughs> looking at my car to see if it's there. And then uh, I said, you know what, man, I got to go. Cause I couldn't see him. He was sitting on the floor. I said, I got to go, man, he, this guy's probably going to scratch up my car. He's probably going to damage one of my tires, break one of my windows or do something. Um, but I went down there and he was gone. He was gone, you know? And, and after he was gone, everything went right back to normal. You know, but again, it was that easy. It was that, I was that close of engaging with this individual um, for nothing, for nothing. I would have been back and then I, I just, to, just imagine that conversation, right? You calling your supervisor, you letting them know you're in jail while you were at work helping people in jail come home, but now you're in jail, <laughs> but now you're in jail, right? <laughs> 
Just imagine that conversation, bro. So yeah. this is why step seven is so crucial. Like it's so important that when you feel, right? When you feel you ready to get them like to come undone, man, you have to understand it. Like, like, uh, um, and not to use another self-help group, but like anger management. Remember in anger management, they used to always tell you, well, how do you know you're getting ready to come undone? Because your palms start sweating, because you start perspirating, because your heartbeat, it starts beating faster. And you know it's, it's either that flight or fight. You're on that flight or fight mode, right? So step seven is the same way. You can have those same feelings. And if you feel, if you're feeling that way, like you're getting ready to take flight, man, catch yourself, prevent yourself from doing that, you know, because or else it's going to be you. You're going to be paying the consequences because again, you're the one that's on parole. You're the one that just got a second chance at life. Why would you not, why would you throw that away? You know, what did none of this work work for you? None of this worked for you to make, help you make the right decision out here. So it's a conversation that I will not want to have with the board ever again, right? Because that's the only way a lifer will get his freedom back, going back to the board, unless they're just on a regular violation. But I don't want to have that conversation, man, because it's humiliating. It's humiliating that you've done all this work. You've, you've come such a long way. And then because somehow, some way you forgot about step seven, right? You engage and then there you go. You're right back in jail, bro. Yeah, and you know, like uh, I was always told growing up, think before you do. That's what this step says to me. Think before you do. Uh, before I go out and do anything, I want to put some thought into it. Too. I just don't want to react. I don't want to be impulsive. And I want to practice spiritual principles. I don't want to uh, be caught up in my defects, right? I want, I want to be uh, practicing uh, good orderly direction. I want to get along with people. And these steps is, is, is a way for me to improve my relationships with people as a whole. So uh, I know when I did this step and they were talking about spiritual principles and deep, I was like, man, what the heck is spiritual principles? Can you be more uh, uh, specific? So I'm gonna throw a couple of uh, uh, spiritual principles on this on the screen real quick, uh, just so we can, we, can, we can see what some of them are. Of course, there's more than this, but these are just a, a quick run, right? You have honesty, right? Uh, something that's, you know, uh, so important, but so hard for a lot of us to do is to be completely honest. We're always thinking about protecting ourselves and not getting any, any getting in any more trouble. Uh, but honesty is an important uh, spiritual principle that we get to learn how to uh, to use in an effective manner to enhance our lives. Hope. Uh, that's something what, what Caesar and I is doing right now. We want to provide hope to the guys inside to let them know that it is possible because I know that just the fact of having hope is uh, that that drives you to 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 succeed in whatever it is that you're trying to succeed in. Uh, another one is courage. Woo! I used to think I had all this courage because I wasn't scared to fight people. I had all this courage because, you know, I would go out here in the yard and no one is getting ready to go down. No one's going to be bullets flying. No one is going to be knives out there. But you know what? I'm 10 toes down. I ain't scared. Uh, but I, re I, I finally realized after decades in the pen that uh, that has nothing to do with courage. Um, courage to me is uh, making the nine the non-popular choice. So instead of going with the crowd, it's easy to say, you know what, I'm gonna go out here and fight and get in here on this yard and handle my business. That's easy to do. Uh, that's something I've always done. It took no courage for me to do that. That was normal to me. What took courage was me saying, you know what, I'm trying, I'm, I'm, I'm getting my life together. I wanna be part of my family. I'm gonna put my family first and I'm gonna do what's in my best interest. and I'm gonna go to group instead of going to the yard. Or I'm gonna hang out in the cell block instead of going out to this yard because I know it's going down. That took courage uh, because it's not a popular choice. Integrity, right? Oh, right. A lot of people define integrity by uh, saying that it's when it's doing the right thing when nobody else is, is looking. Uh, my definition of integrity is a little bit different. Uh, my, my definition of integrity is uh, when your words and your actions are, are, are lined up as one. 
So if you're telling me one thing and you're doing what you're telling me, your actions are showing that, uh, I, I consider you to be a man of integrity. Uh, if you're telling me one thing and doing something else, then I think that integrity is something that you need to work on. Willingness. Willingness is really, really big. Uh, um, and uh, for me, willingness is, 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 without that, you can't change. You have to be willing to be a different person. The willing to show up in life differently. Willing to allow people that were in your life in the past to look at you and say, oh man, that dude done got soft or he's, he's with the funny stuff because I'm not involved in the criminal activity anymore. So willingness is big. It's part of the steps. It's step two is, is willingness, willingness to be uh, open to change and, and to, to, to get feedback from other people. Uh, and the last one up here on these spiritual principles is, is what I consider to be the one of the most important ones and that's humility. Um, I've always been arrogant. I've always been uh, filled with a lot of self-pride uh, for who I am uh, as a man, uh, as a man of color. Uh, and I was raised to have, uh, to be real prideful and arrogant. Uh, now I'm out here, I'm humble. And, and it's beautiful because now I'm more considerate of other people. It's not just about me. It's not just about defending my pride of, or, or being arrogant believing that I'm uh, superior to someone else. It's about, you know what, we're all in this, this together and I want my life to be enhanced by you. So I'm gonna give you the best version of me with the hopes that I'll get that in return. Uh, so I hope that makes some sense, but I kind of want to go over a couple of spiritual principles so you would know, have an idea of exactly what we're talking about. Uh, and I didn't read the definitions of them. When you have some time, you can, you can uh, sit back and, and read the definitions of them. And also, I would encourage that you have a conversation uh, with whoever's around, whether it's your celly, whether it's a, uh, someone in the day room, and talk about this stuff, man, because that's how you get it ingrained in you, and you don't run into a problem that Caesar had when he went into the board, and they told him, you know what, you got everything, but uh, you haven't internalized it. It's not a part of your life. You just know the knowledge, but you're not utilizing it. So uh, I would encourage you to have these conversations. Uh, do what you got to do to get yourself in a position to uh, to be willing to change and adopt some of these spiritual principles in exchange for your de defects of character. Yeah, you know it's crazy that that, uh, and I'm and I'm glad and I'm blessed it never happened. But because I had I had I had made a commitment to myself, right? And I told myself when I embraced this change and I wanted to be somebody, I wanted to be the person that I was intended to be when I was brought into this world. Um, I knew, I made a commitment to myself to change. So I knew that it had to start with me being secure, right? Being me and okay with who I was. Be, me going back to being Caesar because that was a big insecurity of mine because Caesar was nobody. Who was Caesar, right? He was nobody. But the person that I had created, man, he was respected. He was admired. He was loved. He was, you know, uh, uh, people seen him in a different light. But now I'm cutting ties with this dude and I'm going back to being me, well, who the hell is, who, who is Caesar, right? So I had to be secure enough to say, okay, well, this is me. I'm going to start working on me. I'm going to start building me up, you know? Well, what happened with Caesar at 12? What was going on with him? And I started connecting the dots, right? And I started through the work. I was able to figure out what happened to Caesar, and I was able to sort of fix him, right? So one of the things that I suffer from deeply was insecurities, right? Even to this day, I've said it before. There's times where if I don't, if I don't shave, like in three or four days, I don't like how my, cause my, my stuff is gone, right? My hair's gone. So I feel insecure about how I look. So I got to go shave because I don't want it to see that I ha only have hair on certain places. Right. And those, and that's what I mean about insecurities. But, when I was in a situation in, in prison uh, and I embraced this change, I knew that I had to, I had to stop doing everything. I, I, one of the first things that I had to do was stop getting myself caught up in situations where um, I would be confronted. Does it make sense? Like, like for example, if, if I have a, if I have a, a CD player, right. And I know, that it doesn't work. But I come to you, Jacob, tell you, hey, Jacob, I got this CD player. You want to buy it? Give me 10 bucks for it and it's yours. And you're like, 
hey, does it work? And I'm like, well, of course it works. I'm selling it to you, right? And then I sell it to you, and then you take it home, and you put some batteries on it, and you put your CD, and it doesn't work. So what's your next reaction? You come to me. Hey, man, you sold me a lemon. What's up? My defense is like, hey, man, you bought it. I don't know what you did with it. You took it. You should have checked it before you took it. So now this is an opportunity to you become aggressive. You maybe even call me out of my name or even call me out or want to hurt me. So I put myself in that situation. I did because of my actions, because I knew what I was doing. Some of my old habits that I had before, I was scandalous, right? So if, if, I, if I can get over on Jacob, that's exactly what I'm going to do, right? So I put myself, so I knew when I embraced this change and I wanted to be something different, I couldn't do that no more. I couldn't put myself in situations where it was going to bring heart to me. And I had to truly embrace honesty. Remember, I made that decision getting off the bus at Folsom in 2012 to, to continue being who I was. Because I couldn't go backwards. I just couldn't do it. And I had to be honest with them. And because I was honest with myself and I was honest with the people, you know, the people that are that were there, um, they were able to 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 be okay with it and say, okay, you know, do you do your thing and don't work well, and, I, and I was good with it because I knew that my walk was real. I knew that I what I was doing, it was real, it wasn't fake. If it was fake, I wouldn't even be sitting here right now. I'd probably still be in prison. So I knew that my walk was real. And because I had, you know, I was honest enough, right, to say, you know what, I'm done with this. This is who I used to be. This dude is dead and buried. This is who I am today. This is what I do. And that's it. I'm out of the way. You won't even know I'm here. But it's just me. You know, and they respected that because I was honest. And, and you know, I think what you just shared was a good a good uh, uh, depiction of step seven, uh, uh, because a lot of times uh, when we talk about the, the first part of the step, we honestly recognize our shortcomings whenever bad habits surface. Um, you know, so here it is. I'm changing. I'm, I'm becoming a different person. But just because I become a different person doesn't mean that all my everything just disappears. Uh, mm -hmm. It's still there. It's just I'm choosing not to utilize it. Uh, but then when it pops up, because it's going to pop up. There's going to be times when it pop I still say stuff like, oh, man, 10 years ago, I'd have broke that fool off. You know, uh, those are bad habits. Uh, those are the things that uh, we're, the, the defective uh, problems that we're talking about in step seven, right? And uh, the shortcoming, the shortcoming is, remember, knowing that it's not the right move, but being too lazy to correct it. So I know, like when I got out the car, I knew me fighting this guy on the middle of the, in the middle of the streets here in LA uh, wasn't good for me. Now I could have stayed with my bad habits uh, or my defective uh, problems from the past, and I could have went out there and fought this guy. But I chose not to utilize, not to let my shortcomings uh, take over and let me fall into this addiction of cycling. This uh, addiction cycle. Cycle of addiction. Yes, addiction cycle, a cycle of addiction, however you want to phrase it. Uh, I didn't allow that to, uh, to, 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 to make me lazy, you know, and not correct, promptly correct my thinking. And that's what this step is all about, is when you see something that's not in your best interest, that you are responsible enough and that you have enough accountability to correct it immediately and not be lazy and say, you know what? I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just take the easy route out. You know, uh, I'm, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna go back to being who I was instead of staying Caesar. When I jump off this bus and go in this new yard, all that stuff I was doing, I'm gonna let that go because that's the hard route. The hard route is being me. It's easy to go back to my alter ego. I know they're gonna accept him. So, uh, I, and I wanted to point that out because a lot of times, uh, a lot of stuff can be missed. We can miss a lot of drama if we just are vigilant and correcting what we know is not in our best interest. And, and, and I'm saying that because I know I've done a whole bunch of stuff that I knew wasn't right. I knew it wasn't right. And I, a lot of times I didn't want to do it. I was like, ah, I don't really want to do it. But if I don't do it, uh, you know, they're going to look at me like this or they might try to get at me or whatever, whatever. And so um, 
I was lazy and, and, and let my shortcomings um, put me in a situation that wasn't in my best interest. So, uh, and, and I say I, I let my shortcomings, but my shortcomings is my thinking. That's my shortcoming. My shortcoming is the way I think. Uh, sometimes I think in a way that is, 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 is self-sabotage. That's what I've done all my life. So uh, this is a very important step. And I want I wonder before before I give before we get into this conversation, sees because uh, we're we, we're pushing on some good time today for some reason. I don't know why it's moving so fast. But uh, let me let me throw this last part of this step up so we can just uh, we can just flow right through after that. So uh, the last part of the step says promptly correcting our thinking and actions. After spending years being aggressive, self-centered, demanding, violent, or generally rude, being compassionate, kind, caring, and forgiving does not come easy. However, we know that change will occur when we consistently apply our spiritual principles. Our emotions are triggered when we allow someone to make us feel some kind of way or allow their opinion of us to become our own. The longer we let others remarks affect us, the stronger our desire becomes to defend ourselves. When we are able to exercise our spiritual our spiritual principles, this is the point we this is the point we will remain secure, confident, and responsible. When we see that we possess self-control and the ability to respond positively, we will realize that we have the power to do what is right and make positive choices and decisions. Mm -hmm. So I know I've experienced that. Uh, what about you, Cease? You know, earlier when I shared the story about, uh, you know, getting off the bus in Folsom, uh, there, was a, there was something behind that, right? Um, and we all know, I'm just being honest again, uh, I've seen it myself and I'm pretty sure. I think my power went off. So yeah, earlier when I was sharing that story about me getting off the bus and... Um, you know, uh, going into a new prison and, and sticking to my guns of, of who I was already, who I, had, who, who I wanted to be. I wanted to be back to staying uh, at Caesar. So uh, one of the things that I had worked on, extremely worked on, was being secure about making a decision. Because if I was insecure, I would have never made that decision. I would have, I you know, I would have gave in. I would have caved in. I would have said, you know what, this is who I am. This is where I'm from. This is, you know, and then... I would have been lying to myself. I would have been, I just wouldn't have been honest about who I really was, right? Because at that time already, you know, I was already, I, I was, I was, I was past, I was past already. I was too, too far ahead to come back. So because I was secure enough to make the decision and to stick to my guns and, 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 and I say that meaning no disrespect to anybody, but I remember when people used to land in certain yards and they didn't know what the program was in the yard. So they would, you know, out of, I, I would say out of fear would say, Oh, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian or, or whatever religion. And, you know, I'm this and this and this. And then they would hit the yard and then they would see that everything was cool, that there was no drama with any other race or anybody. And they would, eventually go back to that person that they once were right and um and i didn't i didn't i didn't like that i didn't i didn't respect that i felt like if you were or something if you were somebody if you were especially if you were a christian then you stick to that you know and you and you and there was a lot of people that have done that that have accepted um religion into their life and changed their life and and you know they they go to church and they read the bible and then but others use it as an excuse and um I didn't want to be that person. I don't want to be that person hiding from a self-help class or hiding. I was really me. I was really secure about who I was. And, uh, and I was honest about who I was. And, um, and every day, right? Every day when I remember I used to go to work or I used to hit the yard uh, because I had so much stuff that I was working on my board stuff. Um, when I, I thought people... Cause I, I actually believed I was going to get alienated. Like nobody was going to talk to me. No was going to mess with me. And it was a total opposite. Um, you know, a lot of people weren't familiar with a lot of the board stuff or a lot of stuff that I was doing and, and they were intrigued. So because of that, um, you know, I was able to, to 
have these gatherings in the yard with different people and different races and uh, talk about this board stuff, talk about relapse prevention plans, talk about CGA, talk about, you know, whatever self-help groups that, uh, that I was involved with, you know, and, 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 um, and whenever I used, I used to have these thoughts, whenever I was passing somewhere, I was passing the fellas and, you know, I would make up this stuff in my mind that I believed that they were saying, but they weren't, it was just stuff that I was making up in my mind. Right. Um, I will continue being myself. I was, I wouldn't let it affect me. I will be okay with it. You know, whether they were or were not, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. I was still, you know, I, I was practicing step seven to the fullest and nothing mattered to me. Only me being better than I was yesterday. That's the only thing that mattered for me. And, 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 right. and you know, step seven is, is as simple as what you were just talking about. Uh, I made a decision to be Jacob. That doesn't mean dog doesn't resurface. You know, I still get upset. I still get irritated. Uh, I still have thoughts like, you know what, I, I, I want to put my hands on this person or I want to do this or do that. Um, uh, but I don't allow the shortcoming, the shortcoming to, to, to kick me into the cycle of addiction. So, and the shortcoming is me being too lazy to correct that thinking and say, you know what, that's not who I am today. I don't have the option of going to punch this guy in the mouth. I don't have the option of hurting this guy. Uh, that's not who I am. So that I don't even want to be having that as an option. Yeah. I, I, you know, what I, what I love about, about the work that we do, Jacob, and, and they always point it out to us, and you, you point it out to us, that we're, we're the example. For sure. Right? We're the example to, to the individuals that are coming home. And we don't want to show them once we come home, you know, when our defects or our shortcomings or our bad habits surface and we become somebody else. We don't want to show that. I don't want to show that to someone that, that I've been preaching all this positivity to, you know, while he was in my group or, or you know, or wherever he was at. I don't want to show him that side. Like, I don't want to be that person. <laughs> I want him to see me like, man, I want to emulate him. I want to see what he's getting. Like, he's been out here four years. Look where he's at today. Right. He has a great job. He, you know, he lives on, uh, he has his own, you know, where he lives, he has his car, he has his bank account. He has his credit. Like he's like, that's where I want to be in four years. How can I get there? You know, I don't want to be like, Oh man, this guy used to go into prison and preach all this positive stuff. Look at that. He's out here. You know, he's cussing people out. He's calling people out. He's trying to hurt people. You know, he's, he's even back wearing some of the colors he was wearing before. Look, look at like, I don't, what, what happened here? Like, but, I don't want to be that, bro. But for me, see, it's, 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 it's me. I don't, it's, it's all about me. It's like, I don't want to be that person. I made the decision not to be that person when I was sitting in the shoe. I said, man, I'm not, I don't want to be this person anymore. You know, I, I, that's not who, I wasn't enjoying my life. Uh, I enjoy my life now. Sure, uh, if, if a guy, if, if, if I was in prison right now and the, the type of person that I am right now, I would be considered soft. You know, they would be like, oh, he's a soft cat, you know? Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I like when Jamel says that. Jamel's like, when, when, when I was in Soledad and people said, man, you're a square. Like, man, thank you. Yeah. Like, that's the look that I'm going for right now. I'm going for that square look. If that's, what, if that's how you view me, man, I'm good. But, but it's not. It's, it's the way that I view myself. I have to view myself that way. Uh, and, and that's the point that I'm making. And when I say it's all about me, is, is I, have to, I have to view myself as, as a citizen. I don't view myself as a band member. I don't view myself as no, no tough guy. I don't view myself as no criminal. I view myself as an average everyday citizen. And I, and I, I act accordingly. Uh, I'm not out here. But, but it's, it's, it's always good to hear from other people, though. It really yeah. is, because they, you know, they know, like, OK, you know you you're on the right path, Jacob. Like you're on the right path. Yeah, yeah. but the, the the point the point that I'm making is is that uh uh if you don't believe it, if you don't believe it yourself, uh, eventually you'll fall back into whatever uh uh persona that you have because if if you allow other people to to dictate how you show up in your life, you're gonna be showing up differently in different circles for different people. You know, uh like. With you, I'll be like, oh, I'm Jacob with Caesar. But I get around some of the old homeboys. If I'm really concerned about them, the way they view me, I'm going to turn right back in the dog. So it's important for me to have a, a, a secure 
a security about myself, about my persona, like you were talking about earlier, Caesar. You, you're secure in being Caesar. I'm secure in being Jacob. And I view myself as Jacob. And when I start getting visions of dog, I, I immediately correct it. You know, when I start talking about, oh, man, I, I'd have broke this fool off 10 years ago. I mean, what am I talking about? 10 years ago, 10 years ago, I was in the pen. What, what am I talking about, man? Let's get that out of my mind today. 10, 10 years ago, you were like 60. Uh, <laughs> I was 58, bro. Dogs, <laughs> no, but 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 I, I want to get I want to get that thought process out my mind, and in order to do that, I have to view myself as something that's different. I'm, I, I I can't see myself as this tough guy. I can't see myself as this dude that uh can't be messed with. That's super bad because that's not who I am. I'm soft as medicated cotton, and I'm free. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so I don't know how much time we got left, but uh, did you want to get into the questions now? Yeah, let's jump into the questions because we are short on time. Uh, you know, we just get to rambling off and talking and, and uh, just enjoying the space with you guys because I, I enjoy the time that I spend with you guys. I don't want to be in there with you guys, but I enjoy the time I spend with you, <laughs> right? So let's talk about these, these, these uh, questions and the answers, right? Let's go through them real quick. And we end every session like this going over the questions. And once again, I'll give you this disclaimer uh, that, uh, you know, we're not, we're, not, we're not experts. We're not here to give you an advice. We're here to encourage you to do the work uh, so your life can be better. And so we'll go through these questions. Uh, take the time to, to, to go through them yourself. Talk about it with your celly, anybody on the yard. Uh, just create a conversation about it so you can think more deeply about it and it can kind of set into to your mindset. So uh, the first question is, what is the difference between shortcomings and defects of character? Ooh, and explain. So uh, earlier we showed you uh, little clips on, um, on what a defect of character is and uh, what is a shortcoming, right? So uh, we know that a shortcoming is uh, – you or me, let me, let me rephrase that. So we know a shortcomer is someone like me uh, not taking the time or the responsibility to do what I know is right. In other words, I make a decision and I know the decision that I'm making is, is wrong. I know it's not in my best interest, but I'm too lazy to do the right thing or I'm too worried about what someone else is going to think about me to do the right thing. Uh, and it's really funny, right? Because this is something I suffered from from years from being in prison. And my sister brought this to my attention once I came home. And she said, all your life, you've been letting other people define who you are. When are you going to let you, when are you going to define yourself? And I was like, what do you mean? I am defining myself. She said, no. She said, no, you're not. You know, uh, you're not dog when you're in this house. You ain't can up nothing. You know, I talk to you crazy. You don't jump in my face. Uh, that's not who you are. And, and I started thinking about it. And I was like, you know what? I'm being defined by the beliefs, the habits, and the traditions of the gang lifestyle. And uh, I don't want to be that. Just like I, didn't wanna, I don't want to be defined by the murder I committed for my, my entire life. I don't want to be defined. Number seven, list some examples when you have recently applied spiritual principles. Uh, you, I, I apply spiritual principles every day, man. Every day I have an opportunity to be honest. Every day I get to be uh, authentic. Uh, I get to be trustworthy. Uh, I get to be all the things that I want, all the positive things that I want to be. Uh, it's just a choice. Uh, and I realize that I'm in control of that choice. And I make the, what I believe is the right choice by treating people kindly, being humble, and being of service. Uh, so uh, those are some, you know, uh, well, give me, let me give you an example of, uh, of, of when I recently applied spiritual principles. So, um, Going back to uh, this time, this dude cut me off, you know, uh, and I jumped out the car and I was like, F you. He's like, F you. And so I walked up to him. When I walked up to him, like I said, by this time, it had already sunk in my mind that, you know what, you can't go to jail. Uh, you, you're not making the right choices. And I walked up to him. And I'm like, look, I apologize for cutting you off. Now, keep in mind, I didn't cut him off, even though I did create the situation by by flipping him off and, 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 and all that type of stuff. Um but right there was a spiritual uh, 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 a spiritual principle. It was humbleness. I had I had to humble myself to be in a position to um, to kind of quell this this situation I had put me in, and it worked, of course, because uh, I was like, I apologize for cutting you off, bro. I don't want to be out here fighting with you. I don't want to go to jail. I'm on parole. He's like, I'm on parole too. I don't want to go to jail either. Uh, and we was able to resolve the conflict. So that was a 
uh, the example of a time that I recently applied some spiritual principles, uh, want to be humble and being honest uh, with how I'm showing up. Uh, so uh, number eight, how will, how will developing the ability to control your reactions help you? See? Yeah. Well, that's that's uh, by applying <coughs> these spiritual principles in my life, like stuff that you just talked about right now, bro. <coughs> like uh, if I react, if I react the way that I used to react, um, you know, it's, it's only going to get me back in prison. It's only going to, uh, I'm only going to ruin relationships. It's only going to create uh, chaos in my life. And I don't, I don't want to, I don't want that anymore. Right. I don't want to live like that anymore. So for me, uh, developing the ability to control, to control when I want to react, when I want to come undone, that's huge because that's what keeps me home. Right. That's what keeps me uh, free, not behind those bars. And, and uh, I really appreciate the fact that through CGA, I'm able to use those spiritual principles because I had them before when I was really, really young. This is the stuff that, that my parents taught me when I was little, like really little. And then somehow, some way, I went away from that. And, you know, I, I, I became aggressive and I became angry and whatever, whatever was going on in my life at the time that I became a certain way, you know, this, and this is something I seen for me to survive. I have to be this way in order for me to survive because this is a doggy dog world. And, you know, if I, if I am not aggressive, if I'm not violent, then I'm not going to make it out here, especially as a gang member or a criminal, you know, you know, soft ass gang member going to make it out here. So <laughs> you have to be this way. Um, but, what I do understand today is that because I was that way, man, it cost me 25 years of my life. You know, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in my forties. Other people that I've known uh, that have never been to prison in their forties already own a home, married with kids. You know, and I gotta play catch up. I gotta play catch up, and um, and I'm and I'm good with that. I'm good with that. You know, it is what it is. This is what the cards that were dealt. So now I'm back to being me, and and I'm grateful. I'm grateful and blessed, and I have no complaints at all. Uh, and that's what I'm talking about, man. Uh, being grateful would be see all those things are part of the spiritual principles. Being grateful and appreciating what you have, uh, not comparing yourself to other people and stuff like that. But this is it's just those are the things that we want to do to keep ourselves out of out of situations uh, like a sale. <laughs> but anyway, uh, our time is about up. I want to thank you again for allowing Caesar and I to spend a little time in your world, um, a world that we're very familiar with, um, and uh, we look forward to a, a time. In the future, hopefully the near future, where you'll be able to spend some time in our world, out here, a world that you guys are was once familiar with and that will be familiar with again. But until that time, uh, peace, uh, love, and happiness, big bro. Y'all stay safe. Wash your hands. This COVID-19 stuff is serious, so take it seriously and check on your folks, man. Make sure you check on your folks and tell them that you love them because uh, prom tomorrow's not promised to nobody. And with that, we out of here. Peace. Mm -hmm.